Well, hey, everybody, welcome to another segment of Chats with Yvonne. This segment is a second part of my conversation with Helen, where I talked to people that I went to high school with about our project-based learning experience. And today I have Michaela with me. Hey, how are you? I'm doing good today. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. I'm excited to have you. I don't know if you saw my conversation with Helen, but we essentially talked all things project-based learning and our exhibitions and the benchmark portfolio stuff that we went through. But before we get into any of that, I'd love to have you introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. My name is Michaela. Um, basically, what's about me is not much. I'm just happy to be here. Um, and uh, I'm really excited about Chats with Yvonne. I think that's really awesome that you were able to be brave enough to go ahead and build something around yourself. And that's kind of what I'm expecting to do. And it's inspirational because like I'm building my own personal brand and I also love to communicate. So I just think that this is going to be a very, very in, um, informative as well as just interesting to catch up. It's really good to see you look amazing. So um, I'm just here to, to help in any way as well as kind of like get my own type of exposure. <laughs> yeah, no. And, and I thank you so much for having this conversation with me, right? Because you didn't have to. Um, but for anybody that doesn't know, we went to high school together and we went through what um, I called and described as benchmark portfolio defenses last time. So one of the questions that I asked Helen was in your own words, what was that like, or what is it? What was the benchmark portfolio defense experience like for you? I was like, are you kidding me? Like I have to, I have to <laughs> explain why I should graduate um but and then when I would tell people that I went to public school they're like what the hell is that and, you know like I don't what, what are you doing but once I was away from it because I also had a cousin who went to city arts and tech and he had to do it and when I like oh you did your portfolio I want to see it but you know by that time they were all online so he, I couldn't see it for some reason but I I feel like during it I was frustrated it I had a major anxiety because I felt like if I do not do or pass proficiency I'm not going to graduate but after once I was done I was like that was one of the best experiences in my life because it was like literally taking what we learn and bringing it to the real world and that was what has kept me in in college for so long because it's like a lot has happened in life and I do, I was one of those students I had to take breaks that um, went to different universities. And the most important thing for me, because I love knowledge, I had a thirst for knowledge, it was that I wanna be able to apply this to my real life. And I feel like the benchmark defense was uh, our opportunity in high school to be able to put what we learned in our courses into real life and kind of give like, hey, I am my own defense like we're kind of like talking to the court while like hey I can go out and be a, like a abiding citizen and I can help society so you know but during mm -mm, it was just kind of like hey I thought I got my grades to where they needed to be I got my college acceptance so what's going on <laughs> like why is all of this but I really appreciated the whoever thought of that, that was very brilliant. And that I feel like because of how many people of color were, like we were all people of color, whether we were Latino or we were black, um, it was like, you know, we needed to learn how to be able to feel like school or high school was worth it. Yeah, and I, everything that you just said resonates with me so much. And I agree with you. I think that during the process, we were all like, what the hell? Like, why do, why do we have to do this, right? And it really isn't until you do that reflection piece where you're like, okay, it, it makes sense why we had to do this. And actually, we were probably one of the few people doing it, right? Like no one else that I knew was in high school giving presentations because you're right. I already got accepted to college. I'm, I got good grades. Why do I have to take this extra step to defend my work and present and, and do it in front of a whole bunch of people and have them assess us, right? Because I remember for our school, we took maybe two, three days of, of a week to do the, um, the senior portfolio defenses, right? So the entire school was involved. It was almost like a community project where it was about us, but at the same time, our entire community was involved in our success. And I think that's also what made it a little bit more, more special is not only are we defending our own work and reflecting on 
our last four years here, whatever the case was, but we also have an entire community that wants to see us do, do well, right? Um, and then in speaking of sort of what you're doing now and your passion for communications and all that, how do you think that the benchmark portfolios directly impacted your ability to, to public speak or to become a better communicator in your, in your everyday, whether it's career, whether it's school, whether it's like your personal relationships? For me, honestly, um, it was the first time I ever learned how to do a pitch um, because I, as I became an adult and I'm trying to get into like, because my mindset is I'm trying to figure out how can I make six figures to seven figures to eight figures doing communication. So <laughs> when I meet people and I have to be like 30 seconds to say like, this is why this is who I am, why you should choose me, why I'm like an asset um, to what you're doing and why like, because there's so many people out here that are just as brilliant, but what is so unique with me? Um, I feel like that process taught me how to be able to take all of my qualities and kind of like run them, like, you know, manage them or kind of like uh, put them into a big pot to um, come out with something very brief that I could put in for 30 to 60 seconds. And it wasn't, and it wasn't until then, because even then, like, I'm so mad to this day because our um, email got deleted. Um, but a lot of, I had a lot of gems in my Google Docs on my Metro email, um, whether it was my college, um, what was it called? What is it called, Yvonne? It's like the, um, the personal you, statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The personal statements were so good. Um, and I was like, to this day, I really wish I had that because I had to do a lot more because like you were one of the people that had amazing grades all the time. So like you were always like, um, the top elite in, in our class, but it wasn't until I, I was, I was like, the, always no. so like, um, I just had to add that, but I wasn't there yet. Now I'm there where like, and in, in college, I was like, okay, my grades are like, you know, I'm excelling, but because I wasn't one of those students just yet and I was coming into my own and I was making sure that like, is this what I really want? Um, I had to say a lot more like, okay, I know I have a 2.0, but look, this is, da, 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 da. I was able to do a 180 and I'm like really an, a testament for that. So that's kind of what I like to speak about when I'm trying to pitch about me. I'm like, hey, I came from being like, you know, a girl that literally, you didn't know what I was going to do with my life. You didn't know if I was going to be here five to 10 years from now. You didn't know if I was going to try to like, you know? And so then I just turned it to someone that literally wanted to fulfill my life. Like my main goal was to be happy. And then it was like, okay, there's probably people out here that feel just like me. And I just feel like it is my duty or it is a part of my purpose to go ahead and be the vessel for that. And then there's a reason why I talk so much. There's a reason why I'm always talking to people, why I'm always super friendly. It's probably because I need to do something where I talk, I use my mouth. So you know, <laughs> like talking. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I, I love that you say that because this experience, you know, that we had in high school with public speaking, you know, it, it impacted us in very different ways because we are all very different people. You're right. Right. Like I was one of the students where school just worked for me. Right. Like I was just okay, cool, do it. But there's other people where school in, in its traditional way didn't work, right? And so what I think is so powerful about our experiences is that no matter where in your journey as a student you were, this benchmark portfolio or the, the, the act and the confidence that comes from engaging in public speaking and engaging in kind of reflecting about your process or whatever it is, and then sharing it with the world, creates more confident people and it kind of leads us to what we want to be doing right because I agree with you I love interacting with people I love talking to people and I also love seeing the transformation in people right that that public speaking specifically can can make for them you know um this this idea that you described or this journey that you described of you know, I talk a lot. I love talking. And, you know, shoot, maybe I got in trouble in class all the time because I talk all the time, but there's a greater purpose to that. The reason and, and public speaking and engaging with people often is what led you to, to sort of understand that about yourself. And I think that's, that's awesome. 
literally like perfect. That's the way I wanted to sum it up. I was like, yeah, because it's, it's been a journey. It's been kind of like, but I wouldn't want it any other way. Like, I like love my experience, trust my process. And it took time to be able to hone in on that and to accept that and to love that about who you are, because it does make for a better, like, once I get to the end of my marathon and I'm at the finish line, I could be like, wow, I got to experience so much, you know what I'm saying? And that's what it is for. That's what I'm here for, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And in your, you know, you sort of described this like 30 to 60 second pitch or whatever it is, what kind of advice or little nuggets can you give people about how to do that? You know, because I agree. I wish I, I, one lesson that we learned from you today already is save all your work in a like flash drive or something so you have it just in case it gets lost somehow. Um, but the other part of it is this 30 to second, 30 to 60 second pitch, right? How do you get every, all of the amazingness that is you? How do you do that in 30 to 60 seconds? Like, do you have any advice for us? <laughs> well, my first advice is slow down. Um, I speak so fast and when I'm nervous, it is like times 10. Me too. <laughs> we would be like, oh my God, that was great, but what? So that's my first thing is, hey, slow down. Um, I feel like it, the practice, like sit down, write 10 to 20 things that you are grateful for about your life and what you like about yourself. Like, oh, I really like my hair color. I think that my eyes are beautiful and then get to where it is for like um, qualities, whether it is I'm a really good writer, like, oh my God, I'm a great baker or just things like that where you can get to pump up your confidence. And so once you see something and you've researched it, like make sure you know what you're talking about when you're talking to someone, make sure you know what they're offering because they're going to be like, yeah, I know what I am. I know what my company stands for, but do you know? So I used to have those type of issues where it was like, that wasn't one of the reasons why I didn't, wasn't able or I lost or missed out on opportunities because it was like, oh yeah, no, I never checked that and seen their Instagram. I didn't know what they were doing. I didn't think about LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is very important. Um, as well as practicing practice with people that you love you'd be like hey your guys are eating watching you know you eat in Thai watching tv with your like your best friend or your significant other whatever your mom you're like hey so I really want to get into this PR internship can I try my pitch with you and you know get that type of feedback but honestly the only opinion that really matters is your own you don't need anybody's validation but it does really feel good when people support you you know because I also dealt with that it's like um especially like with my move and everything I felt like oh nobody is clapping for me but I'm clapping for me because it's my life so I think those are my best advice and um just slow down speak clearly your tone means everything as well as just know what you're talking about because that helps the confidence and if and then I just talked about building the confidence and, and taking the exercises that I felt were helpful for me to help build the confidence because sometimes you need to uh, run that like uh use that muscle of self-esteem yeah well well I'm I'm clapping for you um if that means anything and I know that a whole bunch of people are um as well, I, 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 and I just am going to say this because I can feel your energy through the screen and I'm sure everybody else will when they watch this, um, but I really appreciate you saying that. And those are incredibly important pieces of advice. You know, that confidence piece. I always talk about once you're confident in, in yourself and your ability to convey something, people will feel that and people will gravitate towards what you have to say. And this practice piece, right? We don't think about it often, but even conversations with our loved ones can be a form of practicing talking about ourselves or talking about, you know, what's safer space than to do it with the people that you love to then go out into the world and do it with a whole bunch of strangers, right? And and sometimes doing it with strangers is actually easier. Sometimes, exactly. <laughs> you know, sometimes like, oh, let me practice with somebody that like, I don't, I'm not going to see tomorrow or something like that. <laughs> you know all this about me, like what? <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and, and so really you sort of have talked about this already, but in what ways has public speaking or communications, whatever, because you know, that's, that's sort of your, your trajectory right now. In what specific ways does that show up? You know, how do you see, how do you engage in public speaking on a day-to-day? -day? 
Well, honestly, I am always in jobs where I am the first person you see, whether I worked at a concierge at hotels, I am now a concierge at an apartment complex. So I am always like, hello, how are you today? Where can I uh, like send you work? So I communicate every day. I am always talking to someone like, you know, I also have a beautiful roommate, so I'm not like alone. So I do have someone to like conversate with to like help on this journey. I, I like, you know, right now with the pandemic and COVID, it's been really hard to see the ones that I love plus some 3000 miles away. So it's a lot of like <laughs> FaceTime. So I'm like on my phone so much. Like I cringe to see my screen time on Sundays because I try to keep it down. Like, okay, let's yeah. get five hours but some day like some weeks it's just like 12 hours 10 hours because I'm on FaceTime I'm looking listening to podcasts so or listening to audiobooks because they've been a thing for me so that's literally like what I am in every day and then communicating through music music is one of my favorite things to do and plus I am a communications major so that's what I do have my degree in so it's like talking and talking and talking words and words and how like it's one of the most it's like a sacred thing for humans so. yeah and, and you know one of the things that I hope to do through chats with Yvonne is de demystify public speaking right because when we think about public speaking oftentimes we associate it with all the nerves all the anxiety all the talking in front of thousands of people when really it is we we engage in the act of public speaking every day through the things that you just mentioned, right? Whether it's music, whether it's conversations on FaceTime with your loved ones, or you're at the you're the first person that someone sees at an office building, so you're constantly interacting with them, right? So, my hope is that we understand that we actually engage in these practices every day, and so if we can make little changes, little tweaks to our everyday communications, then by the time we get to the point where maybe I can and I will talk about my story or about what my experience is to a whole bunch of people, we're ready for that moment. So thank you for sharing that. <laughs> thank you. Just yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And with, with that, you know, you've given us so much already in so little time, but is there anything that you want to leave people with that you want folks to understand, whether it's about your uh, like high school public speaking experience or even your experiences now or or even giving us a little sneak peek as to kind of what you know you you hope to do or, or things like that is there anything that you want to leave the chats with Yvonne audience with today um you're so good to me like this is an awesome like I'm sure the people that actually genuinely watch this are just some of the most amazing people in life so I just want to say that I'm sending you all of my love I hope that everyone gets to do and be what they want to be in life and you can do anything you put your mind to. I know that's very cliche to say, but it's my daily mantra because I feel like when I am not, when life is, you know, on my shoulders or it feels like I am falling down or failing and failing is good. I do like to fail because at least I can say I tried. So that's kind of another mantra, you know. <laughs> And what I expect to do, my end goal in life is that I will leave a legacy and I want to be able to own my own production company because it's been relatively hard to try to get into entertainment. And I feel like, okay, there's not a lot of seats at different tables. So I want to build a thing. Yep. Sometimes you have to create it. Totally. 100%. So that's what I'm thinking. And that's that's what I'm saying. Like I just really hope that good people get to do good things, and and I don't think that there's a real thing that, like bad people. Like not to say like there's a different or there's a spectrum, but I just want um, everyone to be able to move around in this world. It's a very very um, attainable world. Like we can get what we want um, without overextending ourselves or being greedy. So I just would be like, you know, I hope that. I leave this part of the planet because <laughs> I do believe in like reincarnation, all that stuff. But I just believe that I just want to be able to be like, okay, I lived how I want to live. So that, that's it. I don't really have much yet, but I'm working on things. Like I'm working on my own personal brand. You know, um, I don't want to say like, I don't have anything because it's your words are powerful, but um, I'm working. <laughs>
Yeah. And I I just want to say and echo everything that you just said. And I want to end on that note. Michaela, thank you so much for being on Chats with Yvonne. I'm so appreciative for the opportunity to, you know, engage with your energy and engage with your thoughts and all of the, all that you are. So thank you. Thank you.